More and more people are experimenting with microdosing of various hallucinogenic drugs to try to improve their lives and to treat various forms of mental illness. Psychedelic microdosing is the practice of using sub-threshold doses of serotonergic psychedelic drugs in an attempt to improve creativity, to boost physical energy levels, promote emotional balance, increase performance on problem-solving tasks and to treat anxiety, depression and addiction. The practice of microdosing has become more widespread in the 21st century, where more people claim long-term benefits from this practice. The two most common psychedelic drugs used in microdosing are lysergic acid diethylamide, LSD, or psilocybin, which are psychoactive mushrooms. Other psychedelics, such as mescaline, are also used. A microdose is usually one twentieth or one tenth of an active dose of the psychedelic drug. In contrast to the recreational use of psychedelics, individuals who microdose often stick to drug schedules, often dosing once every three days. Some plant-based alternatives that may be readily available and may achieve similar results are oliliqui, or the Latin name Rivia cornbosa, or the morning glory seed, the Latin name Ipomiae purpurea, or the seeds of the Hawaiian baby wood rose, which has the Latin name Argeria nervosa. Morning glory seeds were used to treat illnesses. A healer was thought to be able to identify the location of a specific illness and through divine intervention, through the use of oliliqui or morning glory seeds, was able to cure the illness. This was reported by Albert Hoffman, the first chemist to synthesize LSD. Oliliqui was used to treat syphilis, to help with flatulence and even used to remove tumours. It was also used as a sedative or a pain reliever in fractures and pelvic problems with women. In the powdered form, it could be applied to painful areas in the case of gout. Hawaiian baby wood rose seeds, also known as vidhara or elephant creeper or argaria nervosa. It's a common plant grown in Hawaii and India. The herb has been scientifically proven to treat cuts, wounds, internal bleeding, rheumatism, ulcers and gangrene. The roots and the leaves and the seeds of the plant are used for a number of medicinal benefits. The roots of the plant are a rejuvenator, a diuretic, a nervine tonic, and therefore they're effective in treating diseases of the nervous system and rheumatism. It's interesting to note that the herb is quite effective in treating gangrene and the seeds contain LSA, which is an ergot derivative, and it's known how ergot poisoning interferes with blood flow and causes gangrene. Also, this plant, which can treat the gangrene, has a symbiotic relationship with the ergot fungus, which it requires to synthesize the LSA that it contains. The lysergic acid amide component of the Hawaiian baby wood rose is structurally similar to LSD. In Hawaii, the baby wood rose has reportedly been used for thousands of years as a cheap alternative to cannabis and alcohol, as well as having some religious and spiritual significance. It's believed that almost uniquely among plant hallucinogens, the Hawaiian baby wood rose was not widely known as an entheogen until the 1960s, subsequent to research on related morning glories. Some have, however, postulated that the baby wood rose is a potential candidate for the legendary Soma, the plant referred to repeatedly in the Rig Veda, one of the four ancient Sanskrit texts which are sacred in Hinduism. Wood rose, or Vidhara, is traditionally known to be a brain tonic. It has the following effects on the nervous system. The motor activity. A study done in mice showed that the root extract of the Argaria nervosa suppresses the activity of the central nervous system as well as spontaneous motor activity. Motor activity refers to things that we do without even thinking about them. Experts suggest that this drug may have neuroleptic properties, that is, it helps to reduce nervous tension. As a nootropic, in an in vivo animal-based study, the Argaria nervosa was suggested to have sedative effects on the body, along with possible neuroleptic 
improving cognition and reducing confusion. A study published in the Journal of Health Science indicated that the Argoria nervosa can reverse age-related amnesia in mice and it can improve both memory and learning. Another animal study done in Pune, India found improvement in spatial memory and learning skills on regular administration of Argoria nervosa speciosa. A pre-clinical conducted on animal model study published in the Journal of Ayurveda and Integrative Medicine found that the regular administration of Argoria speciosa extract can increase the body's resistance to all kinds of stress, possibly due to the stimulation of the immune system. Argeria nervosa speciosa is a medicinal plant possessing anti-aging properties. It's used as a rejuvenative tonic, an aphrodisiac and spermatogenic. The chemical compounds present in the vidhara and the wood rose make it an effective natural sedative and it's used in Ayurveda as a hallucinogen. LSA is the most well-known compound found in the baby woodrose seed. Each seed contains around 10 micrograms, around 0.13% of the overall dry weight. When eaten whole, not many seeds are required to experience the psychoactive effects. Caution should be exercised when consuming whole seeds, as ascertaining precise dose is impossible. Some examples would be a strong dose being 12 seeds. Therefore, around one seed consumed twice a week would be a standard microdose. It's important to check the law in your country as the law varies greatly between them. For example, here, morning glory seeds containing LSA are readily available in supermarkets and garden centres. However, these seeds are meant for cultivation and they're often sprayed with fungicides and other chemicals to improve their survival rate. As a result, they should not be eaten and only freshly grown seeds, which are chemical free, should be consumed. LSA has similar effects to LSD, but it's far less psychedelic and it can be sedating in larger doses. Users report experiencing a dreamlike state in which consciousness is fully maintained. Hallucinations are rare, but they may occur at lower doses. LSA is a weak agonist of the dopamine type 2 receptor, which is common among plant-derived alkaloids. Garlic contains sulphur and this reacts with the compounds in the baby wood rose and negates its nauseating effects. Ginger is also often consumed with wood rose for its calming effects on the stomach. However, a microdose of one seed would not require this, whereas a large dose of 10 to 12 seeds would. In 1947, it was synthesized and it was tested for human activity by Albert Hoffman. The intramuscular administration of 500 microgram dose produced a tired, dreamy state with an inability to maintain clear thoughts. User reports describe the effects of LSA as primarily sedating and dreamlike, with a mild to moderate psychedelic component. The psychedelic effects of LSA occur inconsistently, and they're not directly comparable to the effects of classical psychedelics like LSD, psilocybin mushrooms or mescaline. LSA is described as primarily bodily and cognitive high, with very little visual effects. Like other psychedelics, LSA is not considered to be addictive. However, adverse reactions such as severe anxiety, paranoia and psychosis are always possible, particularly among those who are predisposed to psychiatric disorders. It's therefore highly advised to use harm reduction practices if using this substance. This is one reason why microdosing may be more beneficial and safer option. That and as LSA containing seeds are vasoconstrictor, microdosing would be preferable to the megadosing. It's also theorized that a strong hallucinogenic experience may contain too much information for the brain to process all at once and microdosing allows the gentle change and the benefits to occur and be more permanent. LSA's psychedelic effects are believed to come from its efficiency at the 5-HT2A receptor as a partial agonist. However, the role of these interactions and how they result in the psychedelic 
psychic experience remains the subject of scientific investigation. It's been noted in various oral histories that the Huna religion, the healing and spiritual shamanism of ancient Hawaii, employed the seeds of the Hawaiian baby wood rose for their shamanic rituals, using the seeds' entheogenic and magical properties to connect with the spirit world. As LSA is similar to LSD, it's important to look at some of the research on LSD. Albert Hoffman lived to 102 years of age, and he had taken more acid trips than nearly anyone known during his time. He dubbed LSD as a medicine for the soul, and he was astonished and frustrated when the world's nations made it illegal despite its obvious potential benefits and its undiscovered properties in the fledging realm of applied therapy and psychiatry. Microdosed LSD could spell a breakthrough for Alzheimer's disease. A phase one trial has demonstrated the safety in older volunteers, and LSA has documented results in treating depression and anxiety, so it's realistic to hope that it can affect the same signalling pathways that result in both an overproduction of toxic protein in the brains of Alzheimer's disease sufferers, as well as the loss of communication between the neurons and the neuroinflammation. Research into this psychedelic has demonstrated that it's able to activate the serotonin and the dopamine neurotransmission receptors that are involved in the processes to control memory and cognition, and they're implicated in Alzheimer's disease, and specifically the serotonin 5-HT2A receptor. These receptors decline in the brains of people who are suffering from Alzheimer's, and as they decline, so too the cognitive function worsens. And the fact that LSD seems to work on all the relevant receptors rather than just one is what makes it therapy potential so promising. A double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomised trial used microdoses of LSD, given in six doses over a three-week period. The group of 48 volunteers, an average age of 63, reported no ill effects from the sub-perceptual doses. The researcher the head for the Centre of Psychedelic Research at the Imperial College of London said the study provides reassuring safety data and it opens the door for larger scale clinical trials to evaluate the potential therapeutic effects of LSD. Brain scans revealed that the users experienced images through information drawn from many parts of their brains and not just from the visual cortex at the back of the head that normally processes the visual information. Under the drug, regions once segregated spoke to one another. LSD scans suggested the volunteers were seeing with their eyes shut, though the images that they reported were from their imagination rather than the world outside. Many more areas of the brain than normal were contributing to the visual processing under the LSD, even though the volunteers' eyes were closed. Under the influence, the brain networks that deal with vision, attention, movement and hearing become far more connected, leading to what looked like a more unified brain. The drug can be seen as reversing the most restricted thinking that we develop from infancy to adulthood, said Professor David Nutt. The study could pave the way for LSD or related chemicals to be used to treat psychiatric disorders. The drug could put the brain out of thought patterns seen in depression and addiction through its effects on the brain networks. Because atrophy of cortical neurons is believed to be a contributing factor to the development of mood and anxiety disorders, it's interesting to note how several psychedelics increase dendritic arbor complexity comparable to ketamine. Despite preclinical evidence for psychedelic-induced neuroplasticity, confirmation in humans is grossly lacking. Given the increased interest in using low doses of psychedelics for psychiatric indications and the importance of neuroplasticity in the therapeutic response, a placebo-controlled study investigated the effects of a single low dose of LSD at 5, 10 and 20 micrograms on circulating brain-derived nootropic factor levels in healthy volunteers. Blood samples were collected every two hours over a six hour period, and the brain derived nootropic factor levels were determined afterwards in blood plasma using enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. The findings demonstrated that there was an increase in brain derived nootropic factor blood plasma levels at four hours 
and six hours compared to the placebo. The findings that the LSD acutely increased brain-derived nootropic factor levels warrant studies in patient populations. For many years it was believed that the brain didn't make any major changes after a certain portion of time. Today we know that the brain is actually capable of changing and developing throughout a lifetime. It's plastic or malleable and the term neuroplasticity is used to describe this tendency for the brain to keep developing, changing and potentially healing itself. Pre-clinical research has demonstrated that psychedelic substances including LSD, psilocybin and DMT as well as alkaloids present in ayahuasca affect neuroplasticity after acute and chronic administration. A recent in vitro study in cultured cortical neurons of animals showed increased formation of new neurites and this was expressed by the number of dendritic branches, the total length of the arbors and the formation of the synapses after extended 24-hour treatment with a range of psychedelics like DOI, LSD and DMT. While these effects were similar across psychedelic classes and the disassociative ketamine, LSD was the most potent. In light of the increased scientific interest in using low psychedelic doses, also known as microdosing, pre-clinical work with DMT has also been shown that neuroplastic changes even take place after administration of low DMT doses that are considered to be sub-hallucinogenic. In humans, a neuroplasticity can be reflected by the presence of brain-derived nootropic factor in the blood plasma. Brain-derived nootropic factor is a protein that is in part responsible for regulating the processes of cell birth, cell growth and cell death in the brain. Brain-derived nootropic factor acts on certain neurons of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, helping to support survival of existing neurons and encouraging growth and differentiation of neurons and synapses. Various studies have shown possible links between brain-derived nootropic factor and conditions like depression, obsessive-compulsive disorder, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, Huntington's disease, Rett syndrome and dementia, as well as anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. Higher levels of the protein are associated with improved cognitive function, mental health and short and long-term memory. Brain-derived nootropic factor is a key player in several neurodegenerative and neuropsychiatric disorders and preclinical data shows that psychedelics induce neuroplasticity even at low doses of the psychedelics. Also, studies on intermittent fasting result in increased production of brain-derived nootropic factor, which increases the resistance of the neurons in the brain to dysfunction and degeneration in animal models of neurodegenerative disorders. Neural plasticity is the neuronal basis for change in how the mind works, including learning, the formation of memory and changes in intelligence. Beginning in the 60s, important evidence started to emerge from the lab that the brain changes itself throughout life in response to a person's experience. A phenomenon now dubbed neuroplasticity. The findings rapidly accumulated and led in the 90s to a revolution in the brain science. The view that the brain is plastic is now the mainstream view and further evidence of the phenomena is accumulating rapidly, almost on a daily basis. The corpus callosum is a large C-shaped nerve fibre bundle found beneath the cerebral cortex. It stretches across the midline of the brain, connecting the left and the right cerebral hemisphere. It makes up the largest collection of white matter tissue found in the brain. As psychedelics can alter the function of the corpus callosum, it can allow communication to increase between the two hemispheres of the brain. Brain imaging has correlated the reduction in delays between the left and the right hemisphere communication and increased IQ. As psychedelics have been shown to increase neuroplasticity, brain hemisphere synchronization, the release of brain derived nootropic factor, and it's been shown to have great potential in the treatment of many forms of physical and mental illness. It's no wonder that so many people are now beginning to experiment with microdosing of a variety of different hallucinogenic plants and chemicals in order to try and improve their mental well-being, cognition and IQ. 
although it's in the early stages of study, it looks like there's some promising results. It does appear to be the safer option instead of megadosing psychedelics, which was more common in the past. It should be pointed out that this is still all speculation and theory, and this is not an endorsement for taking psychedelic drugs, as there may be unknown risks. It is, however, a great area of research for many conditions, such as post-traumatic stress disorder and depression, and for improving things like creativity, intuitive ability, artistic ability, emotional intelligence, etc. Some of these microdosing benefits may even be potentiated when they're stacked with various nootropics, as I plan to discuss further in future videos.